So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, everyone. So, in the next few minutes, I want to speak about you the impact on implant materials, specifically on periprosthetic joint infection. Why about PGI? If you look on this picture about uh, reason for revision for primary total hip arthroplasty based on recent registries, you can see that now some of the registries said that PGI is the reason number two of revision for primary hip arthroplasty. Aseptic loosening still being the number one. PGI is complex and it's a burden. It's a burden for you as a surgeon because it's always related with a complicated surgery. It's a burden for the hospital because it's always related with high cost. And it's a burden for the patient to ask himself why something like this happened to me. Last year, a very comprehensive study has been published in The Lancet showing about the risk factors for PGI based on more than 620,000 total hypotroplasty performed in England and Wales between 2003 and 2013. Amongst all the possible risk factors that you can see on the left-hand side, they identified some of them which are really related to the risk of PGI. Some of these factors are patient-related, like the sex, the age, the BMI, and some are surgery-related, like the material bearings. If you look on this picture, yeah, thank you. If you look the results of this picture, this is clearly the study that metal on metal articulation for the patient have a higher risk of revision due to PGI, followed by metal on polyethylene, ceramic on polyethylene, and ceramic on ceramic. Actually, the same kind of results has been shown in Italy with, based on the repo registries, where you see exactly the same tendency. A decreased risk of infection if you are using ceramic components instead of metal components, specifically about metal and metal. Steve Kurtz in USA also showed a publication based on Medicare patient that having ceramic materials instead of metal, you reduce also the risk of PGI. Actually, the same tendency has been observed also based on registry from Australia and from New Zealand. So I think we can say there's a growing body of evidence that in arthroplasty, we saw clearly that PGI is an important cause for revision. That actually, if you look at the study from Mayo Clinic, it is data that show clearly that the cost for a revision due to PGI is two times higher than the cost of revision for revision due to aseptic loosening. And also, the mortality is increased after revision with PGI. So it seems that using ceramic bearings, it has a kind of protective effect with, due to PGI. Why? I think it's well known now that the hardness of ceramic components is higher than metal, which brings to higher resistance to scratch, better smoothness, long-lasting smoothness, and also low wear. But this surface property is actually may have also some other advantage. One of the advantages is the formation about the biofilm at the surface of the material. This bacterial adhesion is a complex process. It's influenced by the material properties like the topography, the roughness, chemical composition, and so on. If you look now at some studies, we know that the wettability of ceramic is better than compared to cobalt chrome or high cross polyethylene. As you can see here in this figure, for both Bilox Delta and Bilox Forte, you see a better wettability showed here, but a lower contact angle of the surface. But it's more interesting now to see exactly what happens really with bacteria. And there's a study that has been done by Sorrentino and co-workers, also published last year, about the formation of the biofilm based on Steph epidermitis and cephalicoc aureus on the surface of modern materials used in arthroplasty. Again, you can see that for Bilox Delta and for Bilox Forte, you see clearly that you have less formation of biofilm at the surface compared to Kovac Home and XLP, and this for both staff. Here's some image of the topography to give an idea with the staph epidermitis at 48 hours, and the same observed with the Staphylococcus aureus at 48 hours of the biofilm. This is also another study very interesting, now not based on in vitro study, but an ex vivo study performed by Dr. Trampus from Charité Hospital in Berlin, based on explants retrieved for patient revised due to PGI and patient revised with, due to aseptic loosening of the components. And they make analysis of the samples. 
and they have metallic samples, ceramic samples, and polyethylene samples. On the left-hand side, you see the ratio of the number of samples without showing, after sonication, the presence of biofilm. <clears throat> the ceramic clearly showed less surface, with 34%. 66% of the samples show biofilm on metal, and almost all the samples of polyethylene have been contaminated. On the right-hand side, you see also the quantitative measurements, given in CFU per milliliter, and clearly, again, statistically, less biofilm formation at the surface for ceramic. So it comes already to the conclusion of my presentation that registries suggest that ceramic are associated with a lower risk of infection in total hypatroplasty. The in vitro and ex vivo results show lower bacteria or biofilm formation on the ceramic surfaces. This is clear that for us, Ceramtech, as a provider of the ceramic, there's a lot of possible explanation behind this observation, and we are doing further studies in order to understand more the physics behind that. But based on that, we believe that ceramics components is an interesting material to be used also in different applications, as for example in cranioplasty, spinal cages, bone grafting, femoral knee components, and hip resurfacing. I'm convinced that the next presenter, Bill Walter, will give you some more interesting aspect about resurfacing made with ceramic and ceramic. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Zimmer.